Hi everyone, welcome to Itsy Bitsy's live read of Whom Shall I Kiss? An Earl, a Marquise, or a Duke by Laura A. Barnes. Chapter 1 Are you positive you want to follow through with your plan, Sydney? What happens if your father discovers your experiment? You worry too much, Fee. Papa is busy with his own research to even have a clue what I am about to do. Sydney Hartridge explained to her best friend, Sophia Turlington. Sydney understood Fee, worried about what she set out to accomplish. Was it proper? Of course not. But then it, everything in society towards women was too proper. She wished to step outside the boundaries set for her and discover how far she could push the limits of etiquette. Why could gentlemen kiss who they wanted, when they wanted, and never a shameful word was whispered of them? However, if an unmarried lady did the same, society would ostracize her. If a gentleman didn't offer said lady a marriage proposal, then she disappeared to live in the country in, dis in disgrace. But if a gentleman made an offer for the lady's hand, then she would enjoy a life in the highest tiers of the Ariscus. Why couldn't a lady kiss who she desired and make the choice on who held her heart? Not that Sydney looked to wed, she only wanted to conduct her own research on what choices were possible for her or any other debutante. She decided to open her dance cards as such to every available gentleman in order to entice them to kiss her. She didn't tell Fee the, the full extent of her experiment. Fee thought Sydney wanted to know who might coax her into a kiss, but there was more to her analysis than a simple kiss. Sydney also wished to see which gentleman would make an offer for her hand in marriage. She needed to expose the, the players of the ton when she finished her experiment. She watched too many of her friends destroyed by the scoundrels who graced the ballroom floors over the seasons. It fell to her to correct their wrongs. Fee spotted the devi devious smile spreading across her friend's face as Sydney scanned the crowded ballroom, searching for her first prey. This idea was crazy. She knew Sid's heart was in the right place, but she was also at real, real risk for ruination. However, Sydney always jumped in feet first, and then thought with her head later. She was a passionate soul, something she inherited from both of her parents. Sydney's whole family fought for the underdog and offered their support where they needed. Fee envied Sid's life and wished to be as adventurous as her. For now, she was content to watch from the sidelines. As Sydney's best friend, she had to be on guard and ready to help at a moment's notice. Most people were not drawn to her beauty, but her confidence instead. Fee wished for an ounce of Sid's self-assurance. As she continued to regard her friend, she noted Sydney's attire for the evening. Fee laughed to herself as she took in Sid's dress. The new creation of pink chiffon and silk made her appear sweet and demure. The top of her gown was simple, with a scoop neckline that covered her breasts respectfully, yet still snug. To the matrons it appeared prim, but up close men could appreciate the tightness of the garment. It would then lead their imaginations in unrespectable directions. A forest green bow wrapped around her waist and her full skirts bounced when she moved. Dainty slippers adorned her feet, peeking out as Sid tapped her foot in anticipation. While the dress screamed peer, her features yelled siren. Her maid had interwoven a string of pearls between the luxurious auburn curls piled atop of her head. However, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be her appearance that enticed the gentleman to the side this evening, but the leer of her eyes. Usually, Sid wore her spectacles to scare away any pretentious suitors. Tonight, she discarded them, and her censorous, dreamy stare would reel them into her plans. Sydney surveyed the crowd, noting the gentlemen in attendance. This evening held the opening event of the season. Anybody with the highest ranks in the ton graced the ball with their presence. Sydney had marked her potential victims before she arrived. Two of them were present, and the last one should present himself before 
the evening concluded. As Sydney ran her palms along her gown, straightening her bow, she knew her dance card would be as full as soon as she stepped out from behind these columns. Her usual attire of a plain dress and with a high collar and her customary glasses always planted her in the wall flower section, but this ball would be different. The eligible men would be would beg for a chance to dance with her. Tonight would set the first stage of her experiment into motion. She turned to her friend and grabbed her hand, pulling them into the festivities. Stage one, Fee. Sydney laughed with excitement. Fee groaned at her friend's enthusiasm. This season would not be dull by any standard. She must keep Sydney out of too much trouble, though. In doing so, she hoped she was not the one who became engulfed in a scandal. Sydney strode amongst the ton, wearing an ex expression of innocence, placing herself amongst the elites of the Ariscus. She could do this because the Prince Regent, Prinny himself, highly regarded her family. Her father's interaction with the Crown positioned their family well. There were, they were sought after to appear at all the town's functions. Sydney never a, attended unless her mother forced her. She knew her mama wanted to see her married off, rather than engulf herself in, the father's re, in her father's research. So, to pacify her mother, she attended a few balls and musicals and befriended the wallflowers. But as she observed her friends fall to ruin year after year, she knew she had to hold the double standards of their society. The hostess greeted Sydney and introduced her to a line of gentlemen who filled her dance card full. Only one of the subjects approached her claiming a waltz of all dances. Sydney smiled at him as he penned his name, his gaze taking in the tightness of her gown around her breast instead of meeting her eyes. Men were so predictable. This experiment would be easier than she expected. She suspected that this particular gentleman would sign her dance card. He could never resist a beauty to seduce. He would be the most fun to play with throughout her study. The gentleman was soon nudged aside for another eager fool requesting a dance. They all gathered amongst her, the simpering fools they were. These same gentlemen ignored her any other night because of her dowdy dress and plain features. When she dropped her familiar appearance and graced her form with the added enhancements, they clamored around her like pups begging for a treat. She giggled at their attempts at the flattery until the orchestra started with the first set of the evening. The first man who signed her card strutted through her group of admirers, claimed her hand, and swept her toward the dance floor. Sydney inwar inwardly rolled her eyes at her dance partner's performance of dominance, but smiled and nodded her head in agreement as he boasted about himself. She took notes to write in her journal later as she studied how the male species interacted with other dancers on the floor. She was going mad listening to this pompous jackass brag about himself. They were all the gentlemen of rank always this were all the gentlemen of this rank always this conceited with themselves. This could be another variable that she needed to add to her study. It could help explain her hypothesis that men thought women were impressed by their status in the ton. As the dance finished, her partner reluctantly passed through passed her to the next gentleman on her list, only for her to be bored again by another male infatuated with himself. If this was how the season proceeded, Sydney would require a distraction to endure this torture. She didn't have the same patience as her friend Sophia, who would have drawn these gentlemen out of their arrogance to dote on her. Fee handed the special gift of charming people to see past themselves and to think of others. Once the dance ended, her partner escorted her near the windows, trying to cox her outdoors for a breath of fresh air. Since she was not one of her subjects, she begged off, pleading the need for a drink. The gentleman wanted to please her, so she ran off to do her bidding. Sydney rolled her eyes again at his eagerness. She stopped to stop. She needed to stop this habit, or her eyes would ache from all the rolling they would endure if every dance ended in this fashion. Sydney reached into her ridicule, pulling out her fan to cool herself. 
With each swish of the fan against her warm body, she noted the mating ritual taking place on the dance floor. The gentlemen and ladies flirted with each other shamelessly. It did not matter if they were married to one another as long as their egos were stroked. Sydney noticed another subject flirted from one woman to the next, drawing out the seduction and open display. He would be her most successful subject, already proving her experiment a success with his proudness. She waited patiently for their dance later this evening. Sid stood on her tiptoes, searching the area for Fee, finding her standing beside her mother. Sydney swiftly lowered herself, hoping Fee didn't catch sight of her. It wasn't that she didn't want to enjoy the ball with her best friend, she just didn't want to stand next to Lady Turlington. Fee's mother was a dragon, a fire-breathing one at that. Lady Turlington felt Sydney was poorly neglected by her parents and always tried to better her. While it held true, Sydney's parents were a bit absent-minded and were usually too busy in their own pursuits to pay her any attention. It didn't mean that they were awful parents, it was quite just the opposite. They were the most loving parents a girl could ask for, not only loving, but also supportive. What trouble are you involved in now, Brett? A, whispered, a voice whispered in her ear. Sydney still at the tone. Another one of her subjects had arrived. Her plan kept falling into place. She turned around slowly to catch his reaction to her, appearance, to her appearance. When she faced him, she wasn't disappointed. The expression of brotherly companion changed to the stare of an appreciative male. The easygoing smile of friendship vanished, replaced with the admir admiration of what was presented before his eyes. She placed the sweetest of demure smiles on her face and flashed him a glance of innocence. Why nothing, Rory? I am waiting for my dance partner to bring me a glass of lemonade, Lemmy, Sydney answered. Sydney waited for a reply, only to watch as his eyes ranked her form. He started at her toes and worked his way along her body until he reached her chest, and then his eyes widened. His journey continued to her face, pausing at her smile, where her where his own face turned into a perplexed frown. When he finally reached her gaze, she saw his eyes glaring at her. Earl Roderick Beckwith, known as Rory, to his closest friends, remained in conflicted emotion as he stared at the woman before him. He himself didn't, quite, didn't know quite how to react to the sight. Before him stood a stunning creature in pink, smiling innocently, a vision held false, for he understood what lay under be, what lay beneath cindy was up to something she didn't fool him with her smile he knew better still the allure surrounding her confused confused him this was not the chit he fre frequently debated issues with on a regular basis standing before him was a lady who begged for a stroll around the ballroom floor or walk or a walk in the garden actually for he must halt his mind from where his dangerous thoughts took him. Sydney decided to add another element to her experience, experiment. She wondered what the male's reaction would be if she offered them the same per perusal they in turn bestowed upon her. Her gaze traveled the same distance as his. She started at his toes, where she noted the worn footwear hidden with his shoe polish to appear more dignified. She knew Rory's family had fallen on rough times, but he worked to replenish the family's coffers. Her eyes took their time climbing past his long limbs and over his stomach and chest. He filled out a suit quite nicely. When she reached his face, she tilted her head up to admire it for a while. While it turned most ladies away, others, like T Sydney, admired his imperfections. Thick red gold hair grazed his head, which curled around his ears. His nose was slightly out of joint from too many fights. His Irish heritage laid claim to that. His quick temper made him react with his fists instead of his intellectual mind. When he glanced at, when she glanced at his mouth, she noticed his smirk. His eyes. Her eyes rose to his, where she took in his hazel depths, twinkling at her in humor. She shrugged her shoulders at his reaction and gave him 
her own quirky smile. Well, well what? What are you up to now? I told you I am waiting for a refreshment. Sydney, I know you better than most of the guests here. Now I will, now I will ask you again. What are you? He only, he began only to be interrupted. I believe this is our dance. Why, I believe you are correct, my lord, Sydney replied. Sydney turned toward Rory and nodded her head as her partner swept her away onto the dance floor. Rory watched the couple line up for the next set. He continued to view them as she flirted with the young lord, noting how the fool practically drooled at her feet. He must keep an eye on her for the sake of her parents. They were like family to him, and if she entangled herself in trouble, he'd feel responsible. He needed to find Sophia to discover what mischief Cindy entangled herself in this time. Thank you for listening to this portion.